I, and welcome. Welcome. That's the word. Yes. Welcome to another episode of How Did You Get There? It's a show about thoughts, ideas, opinions, and beliefs, where we are, we are critical of those things and not necessarily those who hold them. Uh, the views expressed on this show are our views. I mean, we might be parroting other views, but we're liable and responsible for the things we say. Uh, no one else is. From Jess, Jess FM, Jess Holdings, anything you can think of Jess related. <laughs> Jess letting goes. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that, that it, keeps us... Uh, it's on us. If you got a problem, come talk to us. Uh, We'd love to talk to you about the things that you think we say that are stupid. Or even if you Or the things that you think we say are smart. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll defer, but please feel free to say we were okay. Say we were okay humans, perhaps, eh? Um, time. Once I was an okay human. Uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, read that, because I did all right with the phrasing there. Yeah, so today, um, sorry, large language models as artificial humans versus our evolved bullshit detectors. Uh, tune in today, gentle viewers, it says. We're here. You're there. Probably, possibly on Jess FM, on Roku, uh, the Facebooks, on the YouTubes. We're on many of the channels. Mm hmm that have sort of longer streaming. The SHH 101. Yeah. Which also reaches almost all of South America. Hooray, hooray. I was hoping to see us on here and then I could follow us on the. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, find so us, uh, find us on. Follow us on our following of the followings. I'm going to follow us following just in case you want to talk to us. That's so those, not, so but those I don't know how to do some that. Uh, ideas put forth by some pretty reputable thinkers. Some kind of smart guys. Some kind of smart guys. Uh, and I, I think Dan, the initial part was Dan Dennett, but he had it more of large language models might end civilization. And yeah. that, that seemed a little intense. Well, to, to, and, and I think he has, I, I think his intuition is just that intuition. Mm -hmm. uh, it was surprising to me. He said a lot of things that make me question his previous assertions about things that are things, th the way that we think about what a thing is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I was, a little, I was initially confused, but I understand his, his point really was um, the way that we evolved is a as a society mm -hmm. is to trust. Yes, right. uh, like, like that's foundationally important to, you know, going to sleep at night if you're not totally worried about your neighbor. Yeah, things we have, we have grown either by nature or by nurture, probably both, um, to trust things that are, you know, like us, mm -hmm. that sound like us, that interact in the ways that we interact. Like we are more likely to trust a dog mm -hmm. than we are to trust an alligator. It has, the dog has fur and we have fur. The alligator does not, we do. We see dogs cuddling up with other dogs. Oh, and we yeah. cuddle up with other humans. Like I'm not saying that Dan no, Dennett no. thinks this, but uh, th no, this but is a, my, this is my, fair... this is, this is, Rounding out how the social evolution of trust works. Yeah, storytelling, storytelling around the the notion that he brought up, and he said, "Well, and you know what? It, we don't have, we didn't evolve with the ability to deal with machines that are trying to sound like humans and produce um, fictions that are not uh, distinguishable from facts." In in that they would build a trust. Um, the perfect salesman is essentially what I was perceiving as his position. This this thing will gain your trust. You will, because it's going to say the right things. It knows what to say in that situation. It knows what to say. Uh, there'll be a lot of this, 100%, so I'm just going to stop now and just assume that if it's near the actual, that's what I've done. Um, for listeners, I just did a bunch of air quotes for air quote's sake. Yeah, in as, in as much as... Um a machine could know something. Really, what we're what we're typically talking about is machines machines that uh, predict a predict a credible response to input. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And credible is a 
just a wildly, wildly loosely used term in this particular sentence. Uh, it doesn't have to be credible to everyone. It just needs to be credible to someone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. at the time that the machine, I will say, utters whatever that is. Well, the answer, although credible, may not even be verifiable, right? Like. It's just just because the answer sounds super plausible doesn't even make it possible. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah. While I will while I will give it credence, while I will look at it and go, it sounds mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I'm pretty certain that credence and credible and credit all uh, are all on the mm-hmm. the same kind of word word. <laughs> I don't uh, yeah word stuff. Yeah, word stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Idiom, yes. <laughs> and drink. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Monty Python. Uh, so I think that the, uh, the 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 fact that it can produce something that is comparable to that which a human would would produce, with enough of the hallmarks of something that sounds legitimate mm-hmm. or or not unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, it's weirdly, it's it's how some people, how some uh, conspiracy theories get their feet, as it were. Oh, the because there, there is the some part premise. of it that doesn't sound that doesn't sound completely unbelievable. There, or at least this is coherent enough. There must be something to it. Yeah. So, ex ex government uh, is trying to do is trying to suppress your opinion. Can I just say, at this stage of my life, ex-government is kind of allegorical. Yeah. Um, I, I meant it as, as <laughs> oh, yeah, a placeholder variable. Place not variable. Like, I understand. I just government, government G <laughs> is uh, trying to suppress uh, your, your opinions. Mm-hmm. Um, now, that... If you actually think about all of the thoughts all the way through it, it's probably not likely because governments are really terrible at getting stuff done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They are good at setting policy, not not necessarily good policy. No, uh, no. This is not to do with the quality of the policy. No, just the ability to make policy. Yeah. So government will say, we should be doing these things. And they will do things that will help to affect those policies. Mm-hmm. Affect, not effect. Correct. Or effect, not affect. Both. Uh, there will be... The, yeah, the, say, well... The, e- the affect of the impact... The effect of the aff- impact was the affect. Yes. Yes, yeah, so they are affecting change. Mm-hmm. Sometimes effectively. Yes. Uh, but there's a part of that statement that people can kind of latch on to. And that we know people who will do things in order to suppress your view. Mm -hmm. We know people that do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day. Like a lot of people who uh, trot out conspiracy theories are doing the thing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) too too many that they accuse the government of doing. Yeah, like (laughs) if you speak out against that specific... Oh no, you're conspiracy wrong. Conspiracy hypothesis. Yeah. Um, then we're actually only supporting the hypothesis by doing so, and they're like, "No, you are so wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Why are you even in this conversation? Know your lane." Yep. Any of these things, right? We do run into this, and so and so that can be very much of a problem. But I don't know. I think we have, as Pinker puts it. Uh, as paraphrasing Stephen Pinker, <laughs> yeah, yep. our uh, ability to, to detect falseness mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is pretty sophisticated. It's not. It's not foolproof. No. Like I hear about scam calls succeeding. I hear about uh, people send money to faith healers. There, I, just as oh. v- vague examples of perhaps how. Even even real living things can still fool us. So then, is it going to be the same thing because of its replicable abilities of humans, right? Like the the Kenneth Copeland LLM. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it and is it, is it necessarily bad? I don't think so. Like 
potentially we, know. We gain a ton of entertainment by framing uh, lies mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all the time. I don't know when, when last you went to see a play or a movie or you read a book or watched a television or a YouTube clip. A, a non-fiction anything or a fiction anything yeah, especially, but right? even the non-fiction. It's framed. It's framed. Right? Like there's, there's, you are getting the parts they want you to see. Oh, you're getting the Mormon porn. The Mormon bubble porn. Yes. I, the, sorry, I apologize to any, to any of, any of our LDS listeners. Uh, this is the phrase that I learned this as, and I don't know why it's called that. I didn't dig into that, <laughs> but the, I should probably just call it bubble porn. Bubble porn from we'll now on, it, but just mm. bubble porn. So apologize. I, I will, I will attempt to mend my evil ways. Um, Basically, what that what that is, in case you're not familiar, is perfectly ordinary photography, which is overlaid with um, cutout circles, mm. holes punched in a card, for example, of various sizes and shapes, but cleverly arranged so that the holes only reveal un only reveal naked flesh mm. and the space and and the the parts that hold the card together cover up anything that looks like clothing. So without the picture being terrible or naked, all you see are the naked bits of the picture. And so your mind fills in the gaps and goes, oh yeah, that's a, that's a naked somebody. That's probably true. I have seen it in action. Yeah. It is... It is remarkably salacious. I can, I, because imaginations. And because such. imaginations. Right, so when an LLM... My brain wants to finish this puzzle. That puzzle looks naked. Bah. Yep, that's yeah. exactly what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so when an LLM produces something that is really close to something that a human would produce, our brains will attempt to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. That sounds human enough. Maybe that guy just speaks, this is his fourth language. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or maybe, yeah, it sounds human enough. That machine just doesn't have enough context yet. But mm. that's a pretty good point. Is it, though? Like, it didn't make a point. It didn't make a point. It just it spewed out some words. <laughs> but our brains, <coughs> we, we anthropomorphize everything. My computer's sick. It has a virus. I realize that the word choice is intentional, but it's still an anthropomorphization of what's wrong with the computer. My car's name is Edward. Mm -hmm. It identifies as female, though. Mm -hmm. Because it contains things. Love what you're. Love what you're. <laughs> Love what you're doing. <laughs> That's pretty good. I see what you did there. I might call my next car doing. <laughs> really? Because love what you're doing. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Multilingual puns, they're on the way. Just, just, <laughs> well, we just got to go to like New Brunswick and catch up, really. I feel right. like, yeah. Catch up. Mmm, catch up. Catch up. Canadian chips. Uh. <laughs> right, so I sort of lie in the, in the Steven Pinker camp that. Brains do things, and these things and the thing large language models aren't brains yet. Machine programs that use large language models aren't brains yet. I would I I feel that way. There's it's still though the the, the scam calls that still work problem. So I think then and why I th wanted to bring this up uh, is if we bring awareness to this and, and we give people that moment to say, wait, if the computer said that, it didn't think that, um, like it would be just a way to maybe throw up a, a berm to, to like reinforce the bullshit detector with actual techniques, like as opposed to just instinctually figuring this out hey that doesn't sound right which great listen to that when you hear that in your head ask those questions how do you know this um and and so if you can ask your chat gpt how do you know this it will tell you uh i 
I'm programmed to replicate, right? Like it doesn't know. It tells you it doesn't know. I don't know. But if I ask a human that I can't see as a human, they could say the same thing. That's very true. How do I tell? How do I tell when a human's lying to me? There's, <laughs> and so so likewise. And then, does it matter? And e- so the answer is maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it depends on whether the the subject matter matters. Yeah, like if, if we're, if I'd love to maybe one day engage with Chat GPT on which edition of Dungeons and Dragons is the best. Not anything from, f- not, not anything for related. I was like, from a- 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 anything after three and a half is kind of, eh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, yes. Role playing. Yeah. I, I, there, there is some discourse about encumbrance online right now, for saying. I brought up the Brad White example. Yep. Poor, <laughs> I've never seen a 13-year-old nearly have a heart attack before. It was so cute. Uh, so good. But that's a thing, right? So there, our brains have that ability to create this story, right? So if this thing on the other end that we can't see is telling us the thing, it is, like you say, easy for us to fill in those gaps, to build the story in to what you're being told the conspiracy seed has been planted we just (laughs) how do we go about determining if it's a weed or or, yeah well and i i don't think that crops i don't think that the the hype that has surrounded recent advances in uh generative pre-trained transformers and large language models Mm -hmm. Has done anything? Generative, pre-trained transformers. Transformers. Got GPT. Got like it. chat oh. GPT. Oh, but there, you had too many T's. I didn't put it all together. Pre-trained is, is one, one word. Yeah. But it's a, is it a hyphen word? Yeah. Okay. Probably not anymore because we don't use <laughs> hyphens a lot anymore. Um, but could be. Cool. cool. Um, Pre-owned. Sorry. <laughs> so it's for sale. Mm-hmm. As opposed to, well, pre pre as a prefix that is a, a short form of has been previously. Mm-hmm. Previous, it's seen before. Mm-hmm. Ooh, words. We'll All get right. right. I'll track so right we now. when we uh, by elevating or overestimating publicly overestimating and elevating the power. Of large language models with pre, with with these transformers, um, gives some kind of credence to their output that may be undeserving. Mm. Right? If if I stood on a street corner in a town where nobody knows me, mm-hmm. and people came up and asked me questions, like how how would you go about building a building a uh, day timer for somebody who works in real estate and i say well what what you should do is this and i give them something that sounds remarkably like the thing that they're looking for and maybe i say yeah and i read this piece on the internet here and i read i got this from somebody i knew that did some real estate off you go and they go thanks idiot (laughs) (laughs) right nobody's going to take my word for it but they do the same thing with a machine and they go oh this is great Right, and what it's, but it's it's not that much of a stretch for us because we will say, oh, that person is a politician. Therefore, what they're saying is probably right. I was thinking also, when when I was in school, and now when all kids are through school, here is your calculator. Mm-hmm. So I have a question, and this machine can precisely answer that question. Why would I doubt any other machine and its ability to give me the most precise answer? I mean, I've only been trained since grade four to accept the answer that the machine gives me is true. Yeah. I wonder. I mean, I, I'm not saying that's the thing, but I think... I think there's an like, element... There's like, I'm thinking like there's like a 2% increase of the, the younger you are, the more likely you are to be accepting of that answer. I mean, other than your not worldliness or inexperience with people that have lied to you. Um, yeah, and again, I don't mind the notion of of large language models as the 
as the underpinnings for uh, language calculators. Well, exactly. Like that was that. That's that's the flesh out of the calculator analogy, isn't it? That that calculator doesn't actually know the answer. Yeah. Uh, a, <laughs> it a, just it just has a thing that does. If this is this and this is this, this is this. And a book of log tables also doesn't know the answers. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And yet, I can multiply very large numbers together by looking up numbers in a log table. A slide ruler, an abacus, any of our tools for technology. They are just tools. They are just the tools. They Unrelated, and it was about three, four years ago, mm. or maybe related. Mm. Um, some high school students proved the Pythagorean theorem with geometry. Well, that's fun. Nobody done it before. <laughs> <laughs> was it was it one of those I feel like that's not one even one of those where like nobody thought to do it before. I feel like it's one of those ones where others have mm -hmm. tried and discouraged others from trying. Yeah. I feel like it's one of those. And like, like But also why would you since it's already been proved proven a different way? Yeah. Three three X plus one. Don't do it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's although But people do it. Right? Yeah, yeah, and they and they're not getting any closer on that. No, no, the, goodness. How fun though. Yeah. But but that's using tools. That were not, um, that were around at the time that the discovery was made, that the theorem was was posited, mm -hmm. and dem and then later they've always been around since, because they used, uh, they used compass. Mm -hmm. Basically, compass and protractor, like straight straight edge and compass, uh, to prove mm -hmm. this okay. thing. That's all right. All right. I was like. Arr. Fascinating. I, That's uh, very cool. I don't know all the details. Uh, I, I might have that might be a little bit broken, but it's pretty darn close. That's it was a few years ago, and I'm pretty certain it was a couple of a couple of uh, Keener, couple high, of school Keener high school students, um, whose names should be important. Important because they're be. <laughs> they seem like <coughs> seem like solid thinkers. Thanks for thinking. Please, yes, please encourage local thinking. Um, yeah. I, I, I did, I sort of strayed towards the politics end of things uh, because we, one of the things that came up in that particular podcast was a little bit about um, deep fakes. That was when we very good. When good. we first, did, you got us first started doing deep fakes, um, it was like, well, we're, we're going to take some voice parts and we're going to take, we're going to manipulate a little bit of video so we can make people look like they're saying a thing. Immediately, this whole thing uh, like this was, was a thing that was really taken up by the porn industry, mm -hmm. uh, not because they wanted to change what politicians said, but they just what? wanted to put other people's faces on naked bodies. Yay! Because people pay money for that stuff. It's the like, I wish that I could I could imagine myself <laughs> uh, having sexual relations with somebody. Uh, boy, wouldn't it be great if if I could have a film of that? Yeah, yeah. I, I right. I I'm not. I'm not, I, I, I'm not judging harshly. I'm judging a little bit, but I'm I, not judging harshly. I, I get it. I don't. That's one of those how did you get there moments for me. Like, ha. Huh. Well, it is it is no different than wanting than wanting to see somebody uh, I guess. In, in, the role of, in, the, in the role of a spy or in the role of a, anything else. It's like. That's true. That's true. Like, like, why don't I just. Who, why don't we have a favorite James Bond? Right, like, because yeah. that's our that's our fantasy James Bond person. Right. So, really, what we should do is take George Lazenby and like yes, retroactively should. and retroactively digitally best, put him into every single best Bond, Bond movie. Because <laughs> we have the deep fake technology to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you don't like that, you get David Niven, which <laughs> which would also be fun. It would be so good to see some of the like the fight scenes. The Casino Royale that was the not the real Casino Royale that had nothing. The one that had very the, the non-broccoli edition. The non-broccoli edition. <laughs> or we just take somebody else out of a out of a broccoli movie and put him put him in there. We'll put uh, Dick Van Dyke in there. That would be great. Well, was, he, he played a character in an Ian Fleming novel. Why not? That, that's true. That's true. You've all seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, right? Yes. Ian Fleming. Yeah. Robert R. Hey, you kidding? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's no J.R.R. Martin. Thank God. 
J.R.R. <laughs> J.R.R. Tolkien? Yeah, that's why I threw it all together. Richard R.R.R.R.R.R.R.R.R. Yeah, Richard. The Richard. third. <laughs> uh, I can almost finish his story. You can't go backwards. You can't do Richard the third, then do Richard the <laughs> second. <laughs> the madness of King George. Because, you know, I didn't want to miss the first two George movies. <laughs> Like Madness Max. <laughs> yes. Madness George. Oof, that would be better. Post it. That would actually be fun. Just just pull somebody's Ben Franklin character from some movie and then fully slap it on Mad Max throughout the whole thing. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> Sorry, a little tangential, but I mean, that would but be But you how, could. But I mean, that, this is, but that's the technology, right? Uh, you're right, and, and how do we, ca- why do we care? How do we... How can, how would we know? Can, how do we know? Oh, because we don't need some satellite phone hack where it's not really Putin, but it's some dude telling his commander to turn the key, push the button. That's where it might matter. Yeah. So that we need to have that level of worry about it. Yep. But in your day to day thing, like I don't think if Pierre Poilievre FaceTimed me, I would a believe it or b accept it. I would um, probably but I'm just <laughs> actually I would because stupidly curious. Why? Hi. Why me? What did yeah. I do? But then what how, did I do to deserve this call? <laughs> but how would I know, right? Is it him? Yeah. Hi. This is your bank calling. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah. Banks don't do that. My bank doesn't love me enough. I don't owe it any money. Yeah. <laughs> they really don't love you if you don't owe the money. That's right. Right. And it's I'm I'm some of it. Uh, some of the problem that I think we get with some of this kind of thing is the Mandalorian effect, where, you know, where where something happens and you you remember it being one way but not being another way. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> I believe it's mandolin. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> String you along a little further with that one. A little off key. <laughs> But yeah, but, but my, I know what you mean. But my eggs are really evenly sliced. <laughs> dungeon Master Guide, Dungeon Master's Guide. Both books exist. I just yeah. <laughs> but, but but I know what you're saying. There's there. Like are, is, I, is, is I specifically this, used the wrong word because, because people be. remember the right word. Yes, and it could but trigger they, the memory effect. It, it could be that same puzzle filtering. Oh, you said it wrong. Like when you spell like H T E, just in the middle of a sentence, people don't go, "Oh, he spelled that wrong." Most people will read it as the. Yeah. Te te is the. Te see it. te is the. People know. People see it. Yeah. And, you know, if if you ask me, <laughs> it mostly doesn't matter. True. Right. If we can convey the message, but that's again. The way I, the way I pronounce. The yeah. word that's spelled <laughs> A-S-K is just the way that I say it. Mm-hmm. The pronunciation can't be wrong because definition, the definition of pronunciation is how the word is said. Yes. And if if a lot of people say it that way, I enjoyed. Uh, anybody says it that way, that's how they pronounce it. I mean, since it's language anyway, uh, it was one guy sort of digging into the words and he's talking to the guy that is the senior editor for uh, Webster's Dictionary. Mm-hmm. He says, yes, Daniel, I, I get, Daniel Day Webster? <laughs> I, get, I get, get called on these kinds of things all the time, and I can't settle these arguments for you because I write down how the word is used. <laughs> so I can't... <laughs> that's, that's my job. You're like, what about this word? He like, pulls out OED. So sometimes I use this little guy. <laughs> 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 like, are you allowed to do that? He's like, it's my favorite that isn't mine. Do, do, do. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But it was it was good that, you know, the dictionary guy's like, yeah, I can't answer your dictionary question because we just write down what it means right now. Yep. We do uh, we do keep a record of what it did mean at one time. You betcha. You betcha. And that's cool. Or just keep old dictionaries, and that's the same thing. You don't have to let others do it for you, but... And they do keep many dictionaries. Also keep um, keep record of common pronunciation. Yes, yes. But I think people people who lose their mind over people saying "ax" instead of "ask." I mean, I just are, giggle because it's a word that means something else to me. 
But I do know what they mean. I don't be like, oh, do you mean ask? And it's such. It's they say I asked my mom, and I'd be like, hoo hoo. It's but it's <laughs> it's dialectically correct. Absolutely. True. And if you're going to make fun of people who say who say ax instead of ask, mm -hmm. you should also make fun of people who say privacy instead of privacy. I do. Well, I, and I do that too. Yeah, Word, words that people say that the way differently than I don't. It makes me giggle, um, because of course my way is correct for me. And so they're saying it wrong because that's not how I would well, say Well, because they're from southern Alberta, and so they don't say Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. 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 Bin. Bean. <laughs> but, what, like, Wednesday. Have you, have you, Wednesday. Have you been to the bin? Bean, bean to the bin? <laughs> it, and it's... But and we, ca and but we care. And all of these things, all of these little tiny little niggling little pieces are the pieces that we use in everyday conversation to discern the reality, I think, to help discern the reality of the conversation we're having. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm very much of the, the things I'm talking about are things I've observed, uh, inferred, and I'm translating out. Right. I want to pick words that will be understood. Now, I want to utter mouth noises that will make sense to a listener in terms of what I'm thinking about. When your mouth noises do one thing, <laughs> you want my brain to do a thing. That, that, that correlates to what so my that, mouth noises so that, are telling you, right? So it seems apparent that my brain is doing the same thing your brain is doing with regard to the topic. So that, I mean, other than our uh, being in person, there is still, I can't look What makes the, you I think I'm here? I can't look in the eyes of the LLM and decide, huh, he didn't understand or Nope, I need to rephrase that. And it, it, it'll present me an answer even because it doesn't have a chance of understanding what I asked it. It's, it's, it's <laughs> not as Gentle viewers, if you cannot discern what it is that we're talking about, well, yeah, yeah, it seems like par for the course, but this is, a, this is the halfway point of how did you get there, our show of thoughts, ideas, opinions, and beliefs, so we can be critical of those things and not necessarily Dan Dennett and the people who hold these ideas. <laughs> It's so weird to yeah. It's it's weird for me to disagree with Dan Dennett. It, so th this started with large language models and uh, it's still the, sort of lang loosely language based in our ability. We're still kind of tying into can does the Turing test work? Can humans is yeah the, figure out if they're being fooled most of the time? Yeah, like, and we like to think that we are we are good at not being fooled mm -hmm. by people. Hmm. We feel that we are better at not getting fooled by people, probably than we are. <laughs> like, um, we let people fool us. Like, we actually enjoy it. There, there are times that it's great. I love a good magician. I am an actor. I go out and pretend to be a whole bunch of things I am not. Yes. I <laughs> fooled them. I yeah. fooled them into thinking I was the killer, but no. Oh yeah. Actually, yeah, I'm Christopher Wren in an upcoming production of. I am. I just took Christopher on. Robin. It, Wren. Ah. Uh, yeah. We open in two weeks. Oh, that's. Hey, that's great. Just a thing. Just a thing. This is this was what inspired me to to uh, consider a different topic for today about. Am I doing something good? I mean, there's, mm. what, what do I have to gain? What's in it? for my long-term purpose for me to uh, get a phone call that says, hey, we just lost an actor. Uh, we open in two weeks. Can you do it? I'm like, probably. Cool, we'll take you. There you go. <laughs> You're joining an elite <laughs> club with that with that particular production uh, and the short that, timelines. That, particular, that, that and that production company as well. <laughs> um, and I, this cuts down on how many auditions I have to do. So that part's That's cool. nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Auditions are terrible. Yeah. Could I send an LL? I wonder, right? The LLM, dear Chat GPT, please do Macbeth, but from the 800s. Actually, that's really when it kind of actually happened. But I want that older English language. That'd be great. Cool. Because the show, yeah, Macbeth actually happened roughly historically 900. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I mean, you gotta you gotta dig into your history to make the thing, you know, plausible. Yeah. And also so that nobody nobody alive was there to say it didn't happen that way. 
proof. But a whole bunch of people after the fact are like, dude, it did not happen that way. Macbeth was a sweetheart. He was a sweetheart. Yeah, but it doesn't matter because you can't say that it didn't happen that way because you weren't there. And not just that, though. Um, that lie is very entertaining. Oh, yeah. Entertaining lies are the best. We want to believe entertaining lies because they entertain us. The force. Like, what kid didn't, you know, your first, at, like, within an hour after your first Star Wars movie, did you not be like... Maybe I have the Force in me. <laughs> well, yep. I mean, up until midichlorians, then everyone's like, oh, pfft, never mind. Uh... <laughs> you mean it's not magic, it's science? Damn it. That's okay, all of that stuff died out because it happened a long, long ago in a galaxy <laughs> yeah, far, 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 far away. away. And, and given the speed of light and all that, yeah. Ooh. Apparently, the uh, the uh, Royal British Air Force is installing uh, lasers that uh, work at the speed of light. No. Yeah. I the, <laughs> the shock. That's <laughs> there are prisms. You could slow it down. But that that was the headline. I love a good science communicate. <laughs> lasers that go the speed of light. They're using them to take down drones. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> or small aircraft that are the size of large birds as, as it goes on to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And it might be true. It might. I don't know. I saw it on the internet. It could have been generated by a machine. The, and there, so I bet um, from like the Hollywood screenwriter. Yeah. Make me a movie. That does this. I need these characters, these plot points. Go. I get you probably don't even need to come up with plot points. You just need to send it through the machine itself a couple times. Hey, correct for this and this. Um, well, I'm there. The output is generally better when you use it when you use those things iteratively anyway. Mm hmm. Because it, lear it learns. Because the predictions it makes, it, it's predictive out predicted output. Mm hmm is predicated on the input. And the more accurate the input, the better precision accuracy? Not necessarily. Uh, just the better just competence, I guess, the, the credence of the output. Possibly. It's, it's more the fidelity, fidelity to the words and concepts mm -hmm. and the input. Because... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the so the hidden Markov model, <laughs> mm -hmm. which basically says I got this thing, and then there's a bunch of states in the middle that we know nothing about, and then we get this output. But we don't, and we don't have to know what those are. We can kind of, we can jigger them around and keep them all hidden. Doesn't really matter. When I put this thing in, it bounces around and comes out this way, roughly speaking. Mm -hmm. Paraphrasing for the mm -hmm. for the sake of simplicity. Sorry for a first year university exam. Yeah, don't, yeah. Yeah. Don't, this is not the answer to any exam. Uh, so we got this, we, the magic box, put something in, right? And then we can push things back and go, okay, well, it was wrong. So distribute, distribute the wrongness across the thing. So come and try again. But we're actually going to do this in a circle this time, right? We're going to, so we're going to. Like, just. Yeah, so I'm going to take the output that I've got and make it my new input. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to take the first word of my input or of my output, mm -hmm. and put it on the back end. So my, now my input is everything I said before plus that first word. Mm. And I'll get another word. I'm going to take that and, app and, put it in, and append it to the end mm -hmm. and run that through. And mm -hmm. we keep doing that. And now we're actually adding more to the input from the output. So it's going to be related to, so we get some consistency with itself. So we, that's how we get, how we could potentially get uh, self-consistent dialogue um, and that's good it, it gives us some sort of long short-term memory yeah okay uh, yeah, yeah yeah right so we so when I unlike uh, really old AI like Eliza do you remember mm, Eliza kind of do it was it was a um, yeah, it was it, one of those things where like you could teach it a thing, but if you taught it another thing, it had to forget the first thing. Kind sort of. of. It was it was a psychoanalyst. It basically played the role of a psychoanalyst, mm. right? So you say, "I'm having a bad day. 
why are you having a bad day? <laughs> well, my girlfriend, t my girlfriend just left me. You just mentioned your girlfriend. What's the problem? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. not bad. I'm, I'm fictionalizing mm -hmm. how this works, but it, essentially that's how it works. As it just takes what you said, spits it back as a question. So you say that. So you say, well, you know, why do you say that? What it is? What is it about X that makes you feel Y? Mm -hmm. Right? And it, and you can add. There's there's an entire branch of psychotherapy where uh, where you take and you just redirect every statement as a question to get people to drill them to just drill down themselves yeah. into their own problems. I don't know if it's useful or not, but you can write a computer program that does that. Cool. And for a while, people thought that's this is creepy. It's really good at this thing. Yeah, it's only good at that one thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now we have a different kind of transformer that instead of being hand coded to find particular patterns in speech and then reword that and spit it out as a question, we have something that's been um, machine trained uh, for big picture. We use machine learning to go through and uh, mathily build these magic black boxes that do the things. Uh, but it's, it's a machine learning thing that restructures what you give it as input to create output. And it's not doing anything different than Eliza. Was, it's not smart. It's actually a thing <laughs> that you explained it to me really well one day. It's that same sort of, uh, you, you, like the Eliza, you give it the thing, uh, and it sort of is manually programmed to do that. But in the large language model, instead of, I sat there for weeks with different subjects, getting responses and hard coding these interactions it in its language learning mode it does it to itself over and yeah. over and over and over and over like that's how the go computer is good at go is because it played itself over and over and over and it played itself so many more times than any human could ever play in a lifetime that's what makes it perceivably smarter about go it's not yep. it's just got way more experience and and can make better predictions because of its experience yeah there there have been cases where um, a straight line reg regression model has performed better than a human making an estimate. Mm -hmm. Lots of times that this is true, right? It's just a tool. It's a mathematical tool to estimate what the right answer could be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, and it's fine. It's great. We, we can do this all the time. We actually do this in our brains for a lot of things. We don't know. Uh, what the best time to cut between traffic is, right? If you're gonna j if you're gonna cross between intersections <laughs> while traffic is going, your brain's gonna do a bunch of math. You don't really think of it as doing math. You're just sort of look, looking for gaps. Yeah, you're and when a predictive model really quickly. And then you quickly knock together this thing. You don't know exactly when that car's gonna go by, but you're pretty sure that you're not gonna be there when the car is there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we're okay with that. We we think that's that's sufficient. And we call that making an educated guess. Yeah. Um, I haven't been hit by a car before. Education works. I've been hit by a car. Uh -huh. Technically, I ran into the car, but that's a, that's still a miscalculation on the same premise. Oh, I didn't even calculate. I didn't even look. I just ran. Dunk. <laughs> Zero calculations were made. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, the odds I, were incalculable. I did not. I did not cross <laughs> irregardless. A calculative. <laughs> it's a calculative street crossing, uh, and it's and it, if we do it, it's okay. But if we let a machine do it, uh, the whole world is all of civilization is going to come to a halt. Okay, yeah, exactly. Um, uh, right? Have you have you ever caught a baseball? I have. Right, and it probably it was probably up high and then came down to where you were. Yes, I made a like, guess as to where it was going to go. You, you saw it. You saw it. It's vertical position change uh, over time till its vertical its vertical change was zero and then it accelerated towards you. Yes. From up. Yes. And it was traveling forward at approximately the same speed, give or take a little bit of a friction. It's probably gonna uh, land almost the exact same speed it left from. Give or take a little give bit or take a little bit of air <laughs> yeah, a little bit of friction. <laughs> um, and then you caught the ball. 
yeah, we can build a mathematical model of what's going on, and then we can program, uh, we can program a computer to very quickly make an estimation, a quick couple of snapshots to, to calculate the same thing that you did when you caught the ball, mm -hmm. and then we can have it move its arm to the place where the ball is going to come down, so it will get there just just before the ball gets there. Does the same thing your brain does. Mm -hmm. But we go, oh, well, that's not smart. It didn't think about it. We just told it what to do. It is almost nothing different from you learning how to catch a ball. No, yeah, no, you're not thinking. Ah, oh, clearly that ball left at 92 miles per hour at a trajectory of 25 degrees. I'll need to start running backwards now at about 14 kilometers an hour so that I could maybe extend that. You're not doing that. No, but no. we can model what's going on. But we sure approximate all of that in a heartbeat. We approximate. Oh, look at that ball go! Yeah, yeah. and it's <laughs> and it's an approximation. And honestly, eighty-four percent of the time, our approximations are pretty good. Yeah, and if you're if you're an excellent if you're excellent at this thing, your approximation rate is higher. And if you're crap at these things, <laughs> your approximation rate is lower. First time with a ball glove. I was, palming it or right I was, outside. <laughs> is it uh, Little Brown Mouse on the I think so. on, on the X? Ask the question about, uh, do you ever get, like, you know, intermediate expert? Little Gray Mouse. Little Gray Mouse, yes. Little Gray Mouse, thank you. <laughs> little Gray Mouse, thanks. Good question today. Uh, does anybody else just get to be, like, a an advanced intermediate <laughs> in something and then move on to something else. I'm like, yeah, I love to multi-class. <laughs> like I have, I have high level levels in what I will call wizard. Yep, uh, yeah. I have, but I also have, I also have levels in, uh, I also have levels in uh, magic. <laughs> like, like I have, I have levels yeah. in, I have, I have levels in fighting. I have some levels in, in, in thievery, I suppose. Um, F find and remove traps. I have I have so many, like I I, I there I have too many uh, proficiencies to uh, to list in a in a short tweet. Sorry, excerpt. Yes. Um, TM. <laughs> <laughs> and I just I regret that my uh, my my dex penalty offsets any proficient proficiency bonuses <laughs> I get for anything related to to athletics checks. <laughs> But I, my, all of my athletics things are proficient. My proficiency is higher than an average person, but my dex is so much lower. It pretty much cancels out making me like regular, not suck. <laughs> well, I mean, endurance. So constitution high. Oh yeah. Constitution. Like I can, I can, I can dance for a long time. I just can't do it very well. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, same idea. Same it's, idea. but it's the same. I'm approximating a ton of things in there. Like I approximate everything. It's a lot easier, the the, the heuristic that it is, right? Yeah. Like I I've been alive over fifty years. Yeah. So <laughs> like, recently I saw I saw a list of fifty words that if you see it in a document, it was probably written by by AI. Was this document itself then thusly generated by AI because those words were in it? I didn't even go there. Oh, okay. Just a, <sighs> I, the I, ridiculousness I, that is, watch out for the end. <laughs> no, it, hyperbolic. What it was, it. I understand the nature of the of the document. It was to help people, you know, recognize when somebody is using AI text mm. to try and put forth an argument. And it and this was an argument from diction, mm. not enunciation. Okay, uh, but from choice of word, that colloquially we don't say things like colloquially. <laughs> like you and I might. Yeah, I do. I like. I, I can remember tweeting that within the last week. Colloquially, we say. Right, but it's not. But there, are, there are a lot of words that many of many people use, and it almost sounded like if you have a good vocabulary. You could be AI. Yeah, that would be my concern right away. Right, so... I can tell when I'm reading a tweet from a writer, most half the time because they're asking me about a word use. 
Um, but and, like, and the other half because it's correctly punctuated? Yes, sometimes. Or intentionally badly punctuated. Yes. I get a lot of that too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I send a lot of that too. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just notoriously bad for comma splicing. Sorry, take it. I'm notoriously bad, <laughs> comma, for com comma splicing. <laughs> I'm notoriously bad for comma splicing. Yes, that's right. I, I, Commas I, save lives. <laughs> Let's eat, Grandma. <laughs> Let's eat, Grandma. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A mistake that LLM might not make, though. I mean, that's the little blue underline grammar corrections for me, isn't it? Yeah. Basically. So when I'm typing away and it gets like, because I put, I, ooh, it was a good one, too. Let's. I did not mean let us, LLM. I meant let's, as in let's them out. The past tense of let. <laughs> the active past tense of to let. Yes. I Yes. <laughs> Who lets the dogs out. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so yeah, it wasn't let us. It was it was let's. Yeah. And, but, well, the, the but that's not even... I, that's I not the LLM learn what I meant in the context of that sentence. Yeah, it's not even LLM, though. But that's the same idea. Yeah, it's the right idea. Just like, like I don't lie to my, my internet things. I'm like, I don't just look for random crap just to screw with my learning. I want it to learn what I'm looking for and make good suggestions. Yeah. Like, I, one of the algorithms I studied in language munging uh, is the Viterbi algorithm, which is all about the probability of a sentence, which mm. sounds like a ridiculous thing to say. And when you think about it, it is a ridiculous thing to say, but there are sentences that are more probable. How's the weather? How's the weather is a pretty probable sentence. Yep, how are you doing? How's your mother mm. is actually also a very prob probable sentence. Um, how's Bob's <laughs> elephant is an unlikely sentence, but not as unlikely as you'd think. Right. Um, I mean, that's is that just like a statistical usage over absolute usage? Yes. Okay. Cool. Right. And, and so there's what we do is we look across. We have we have a vocabulary, and it's we ha, we sort of as for simplicity's sake and computational size assume it's a fixed vocabulary, and we take a look at example sentences across the vocabulary. And for each word, we take a look at how often it's followed by another word. Mm -hmm. And we can fairly quickly build a thing that will fairly, fairly quickly find the most likely sentence that you're building. Ah, the new predictive capabilities in my text things. Exactly. It, and that's kind of like what it's follow, doing. And it's already saying, I got FOL, and it's like, follow up. Right. But that's, that's it's the same kind of algorithm that was employed in a lot of early just spell checking. So when you type a word, it says, well, it's unlikely that you meant uh, T-H-I-E-F. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might have meant that. That could be Bob's name, last yeah. name, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob Tyfe. Bob. <laughs> right, so there, there, there's uses of these tools. They're, they're kind of handy, and they, they don't have to all be large language models. Like, it's, it's like... And I, uh, everybody pointing at, at GPT and large language models saying, this is the downfall of our system. This is where everything is. This is, this is, the, this is the line that once we cross it uh, will mean the end of all civilization. And I will point at probably fire and steam light bulb. and the light bulb. We haven't gotten over the light bulb. And it did wreck our civilization. Is well, no, we're still, we're still here. But like civilization as we knew it ended. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah, and yeah, also so steam. So this is also fire. Hey, also, also I the wheel. Yeah. Where's my wooden shoe? It. But it's the. But if we think of it like maybe if I were to be charitable towards Dan Dennett, I think probably a wise move. <laughs> at this point, yes. Uh, when he says the end of civilization, perhaps it's that. It's it's the. The fire definitely changed the course of humanity, right? The steam engine definitely changed the course of humanity. The electric light bulb definitely changed the course of humanity. Our ability to communicate went crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, th in that aspect, mm -hmm. the, this could be 
the end of this part of civilization as we enter a new chapter. I'm Oh, it's the end of the world as we know it and I feel fine. And I feel fine. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The future is so bright. I have to wear shades. Yeah, cuz cuz Venetians were not an option. <laughs> That's correct. That's correct. Northern Pikes, things I do for money? Yeah. I'll never understand. <laughs> Yeah. <sighs> Shout outs to everybody. I know, I know. We're near the end and it feels like there's... We've scratched a surface somewhere. Yeah. Uh, you know when you have an itch and you scratch that itch and then you stop and the itchy spot says Thanks. I need more. I have cats that do that. Yeah. <laughs> as well as little spots on me. They're like Oh damn it. <laughs> yeah, this is one of those for me. I, I would very much like to be able to do the thing where I go, oh, yeah, look, here's the answer. But there is, I, I don't know where the answer is in this. I do know that uh, you, you did mention the Turing test. And mm -hmm. at the time that at the time that it was sort of coined as a, as a test for intelligence, um, we didn't know as much about intelligence then as we know now. Um, also but cool. we we it's, it's cool yeah yeah uh we but it's also it's, it was also about um we also didn't know how much we could compute oh well, yeah hey. right the the computability of things that we do with language now is just in it's just driven by horsepower like it, the machines aren't smarter they can just do more things faster yes yes the 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 gas whether you're a V, a four cylinder or a V6, you're still a gas engine. Right. You're still moving a car, right? You just have more power to do those things with. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Okay. And so that, and that's, and unless and until we make another hurdle, uh, leap another hurdle towards that. I mean, it's kind of like battery powered everything is great. There are there physical are, restraints on currently, this one. Currently, we have problems. No pun intended. Mm -hmm. uh, that storage is limited because we haven't really improved the battery in a couple thousand years. Pretty much. We changed the chemistry a bit, but that's like adding more horsepower to your computer. For the most part. For the most it's part. Still, it still only does what it does. It can only, so. and it, it's never a net gain to store power. Because you're, it's it's a lossy system anyway, right? Yep. Currently. Ha <laughs> uh, ha. Well, no, for real. There's there's. Music yes, and any other thought would be revolting. Aha! Aha! The humor. Resistance is useless. That's it. It's, it's yes. It so prevents burnout. It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you got the capacity. Well, it seems like we're really getting close to the end here. We got about a minute and a half, two minutes left. Somewhere in there. Uh, somewhere in there. Where are we going to go next time? What uh, do you think? I I, th I think uh, right and wrong. Right and wrong. Okay, which one do you want to be? I would, I would <laughs> like to be wrong. Um, yeah, yeah, is, is, I mean, do, yeah. Is there right and wrong? That's a good place to start. I, I just want to ta tease this out there. It's like, um, if, if there is no objective morality, is subjective morality anything more than mob mentality? Yeah. Right. I'm, so I'm going to throw that out there That's because, because that is, that is a, that, that is the, that is the, probably a proper challenge to subjective morality it, uh, and uh, i'm just going to throw that so we have i'll give you a couple of weeks to think about it nah, sh sh <laughs> oh you'll think about you'll think about it like as soon as we get off the I, air i've already got this <laughs> he's talking moral relativism uh, i don't know you know. I, oh no i mean that's that's your morals because uh, you're my brother hilarious. <laughs> keeping the larry and hilarious i think let's 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 i don't want to i don't want to breach into anything new i don't want to all right. Well, pick a scab and just watch it leak. Um, but we'll do a thing in we'll two in two thing. weeks in a fortnight. Yeah. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I'm Stephen. I'm Jeff. We're the Graham brothers. Thanks again to Jess for all his technical savvy and wonderfulness, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Have a good day. Cheers. Cheers.